on the computer this time. I was looking for the seventh person who dropped out. I saw him pop up and then go away. Maybe they had uh, network issues or something. Hopefully they'll log back in. <clears throat> Maybe they saw who the, who the instructor was today and said, I'm out of here. <laughs> 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 they okay, went on long, so they didn't know who the instructor was yet. Unless yeah. They <laughs> okay, so we're ready to go. So there's what, there's seven. So Steve, there's seven people. Is that the number on the call at this point? There was. That's why I said that seventh one was on just briefly, and before I got okay. a chance to do anything, it popped off. So I wondered. Okay. Why. Okay. Nope. Mm -hmm. So everyone is on the call because I see six screens yep. on mine. So that's what it is, including myself. So. All right, well, I'd like just to say thank you, Marie, for the nice introduction and for asking me to be here. And, and I appreciate the opportunity to share with you. Uh, Marie had asked me, oh, last, almost a year ago, if I'd be interested in, in doing a talk or helping somewhat, and because we've known each other through the financial services uh, industry. And um, so we talked about some different topics and, and we kind of came up with annuities as, as something to talk about, uh, because it's kind of a, you know, for most people, it's it's kind of a funny word. It's confusing. It's a mystery. And I've been involved for 47 years in the insurance, been licensed that long in the insurance. So to me, it's like, you know, it's just a pretty pretty easy. But it's it's a very it's a complicated. It's, it's a simple but complicated both. So that's what we picked as a subject. And uh, and and I'm excited for you to ask questions. So please. I think direct, you direct the questions to Marie and then she'll ask me. And, and so um, questions will make this go a, a lot better. So please feel free to ask any question. And as they say, there's no such thing as, a, as, as not a good question because um, other people are thinking the same thing. You're just the one asking it. So please feel free to do that. So, and in this talk, I'm just trying to do, give you the general basics, the overview. We're not gonna get into a deep dive into uh, actuarial and things, but just give you a good working knowledge of what an annuity is and isn't, what you can do with it, what you can't do with it, things to look look for, uh, good and bad, and, and that type of thing. So, um, so here's here's the three the three points now that we want to cover on the annuity is um, first of all, what are fixed annuities? Because the focus of the talk today is on fixed annuities, and there's there's some other types that we'll get into as well. I just will mention their name and give you like a a uh, one sentence definition because they're not part of the subject today. But what are fixed annuities? Number two, um, yeah, what are the different types of annuities, which which we'll get into in a, in a little bit. Number three, what are the positives and negatives of fixed annuities? Again, things good or bad, things to watch out for, benefits, that type of thing. So. Um, that's that's these the objective today. So, so I'm going to start with uh, number one, uh, and and I think you have a handout sheet that was I think made available or sent to you, um, if you want to follow along or make notes or whatever. So the first one under A is fixed annuities are a conservative cash investment with opportunities for tax deferred growth, usually used as a retirement vehicle. So that's that's kind of a simple. Um, kind of one-line definition of an annuity. So, so a fixed annuity is number one. It's conservative. Um, your money's not out at risk like in the stock market. It's conservative. It's guaranteed by the insurance company. Um, you're not going to get rich with that. It's going to keep you from losing money. Is is kind of the objective when people buy fixed annuities. Is have a conservative cash investment. One of the things that sets it apart from other similar investments is that the, the earnings on it grow tax deferred. So that's probably the big flag waving, so to speak, on annuities. You get tax deferred growth. You don't pay taxes on it until you pull the money out and then you pay taxes on it. Um, taxes are, are at ordinary income. There's, that's not a capital gains thing, it's ordinary income. But you can leave the money in for two years, 10 years, 30 years, 50 years, doesn't matter. It can grow tax deferred and then when you take it out, that's when you pay taxes on it. A, a general annuity, it's not tax deductible going in like an IRA, although you could put it in an IRA and that's a whole nother discussion we're not even gonna get into, but you could have it part as part of an IRA, but just a general personally owned annuity is not tax deductible. It's, it's after tax, like putting money into a CD or a savings account, it's after tax money that, that's going in there. 
So where do you buy an annuity? You buy an annuity only from life insurance companies. So they are the ones who make, create annuities. And they've been around for, I don't, I don't know, 100 plus years. I couldn't tell you the exact. Um, but they've been around a long, long time. And uh, I guess I, I've worked with them for, I'm not actively working with them anymore today, but for 47 years, I've been involved with them. And, and um, but you get it from a life insurance company. Um, why would somebody want to buy an annuity? Well, back, and some of this will be a little repetitive, but it's a, it's number one, it's a safe investment. So, um, and I'll kind of get into some of the guarantees a little bit later, but it's a safe investment. It's guaranteed by the insurance company. So a fixed annuity, again, we're talking a fixed annuity. Um, the, the, it's safe, it's tax deferred, and and generally, you get a little higher rate of return from annuity historically. I mean, it depends on the market. It can change a little. Generally, you get a little higher return than you would in a, in a savings account. And, and in, in times past, you can be a little higher than a, a CD because you, you commit to leave the money in for a little bit longer generally. And I say generally because there's all different technical details. But usually when you buy an annuity, you're committing for typically three years, five years, seven, eight, ten at the longest, typically. So since you're committing for a longer period of time, that's where you can get a little higher rate of return um, in, in a fixed annuity. And then, and also the larger quantity of money you put in, you can get a higher rate of return. So it's how long you leave it in, number one, how long you commit. Number two, it's the larger quantities you can get a higher rate of return. So Larry? No. Yes. I can't, can't hear you, Marie, you're on mute. Okay. Okay. What's the okay. current best or the typical rates today? So yeah, you know, I, I checked with a couple companies that I'm, you know, I have a relationship with and bro, you know, whatever. So they're kind of in the one to three percent range. Just, you know, now some annuities, and again, it depends how long, again, how much you put in and how long you commit for, but kind of one to three percent. Some will give bonuses the first year of maybe an, an extra three to four percent, and then they might pay one percent after that. So, but usually when it comes out in the wash over, you know, three to seven, eight years, um, well, if it's a longer term, like seven, eight years, it's probably more like two to three percent, two and a half or three percent. Um, so that's the range. In years past, um, you know, five years ago or seven, eight, when interest rates were higher, you know, they're paying five, six, seven, eight percent rate of return. So generally, whatever a CD, it's, you know, and CDs are great. I'm not, they're totally great. Um, it, it's maybe a little higher return, um, but, but the money is committed for that period of time. You can get access to some of it or part of it, and I'll get into that in just a little bit because there's some early surrender charges, and I'll, and I'll get into that, but, um, but that's the range, kind of the one to three percent and um, so does that kind of answer that question there, Marie? Okay. Good question. Great question. Thank you. A good, good question. That came from Roger. <laughs> All right. Well, excellent. Excellent. So um, let's see. Um, and, and so then part of the question, how safe are annuities? So the, the fixed annuities, again, um, they're backed up by the uh, life insurance company's assets. So the general asset portfolio of a life insurance company, that all is there to guarantee the annuities. Mo life insurance company portfolios are regulated by the state. Each state, they're state regulated nationally, and they only can put so much of their money into different assets. The bulk of them generally is in bonds, and generally more conservative bonds is the bulk of the life insurance company's portfolio. There's a little bit in stocks, a little bit in real estate, a little bit in, in some other things, but you look at most portfolios and I'm going to say, you know, 60 to 80% roughly is in bonds It all, you know, in hundreds and hundreds of bonds. Um, can be uh, corporate bonds, state bonds, U.S. bonds, city bonds, There's a, that's totally diversified. And... Um, then number two, the other guarantee you have, there's a thing called the um, 
most all states have a state guarantee association that backs up the insurance company. So in Idaho, it's called the Idaho Life and Health Guarantee Association. So that's a guarantee if the insurance company gets in trouble, which is very rare, it, it, ha it happens very, very rarely, but if they get in trouble, then the state insurance guarantee comes in. Um, I think in Idaho, it's, they guarantee 250,000 uh, for an annuity. There's 300 maximum per person. So 300 would be the very max if you had two annuities. If you had one, it'd be 250,000. Now, when you're talking with an insurance agent, they legally cannot tell you about the State Insurance Guarantee Association because the insurance department and the association does not want you to buy the annuity based on, on, on their backing up the insurance company. They want you to buy it based on the strength of the insurance company, not the fact that there's a guarantee behind them. So, so an agent should not be talking about it. Um, Larry, our yes. question is, do you recommend a minimum rating for an insurance company? Great question, great question. Yeah, so ratings, that's a really good question. There's several sources that rate insurance companies. Um, one of them is AM Bests, and companies are AAA, AA, A, and then there's in the B plus and B plus plus and B and C. Um, you know, generally people like to stay in the A rating. Generally, you know, it could be A plus, A, A minus. Generally, you know, B plus plus is fine. I mean, and I, I'm not giving. You know, I have to be careful what I'm saying here, but. Um, you know, if you get into the um, low Bs, I, I'd, I'd be a little bit nervous. Um, you know, I mean, personally, probably B++ plus plus is, is the lowest I would go. And, and that's, um, and, and so you can get those ratings from the insurance department. So Idaho, every state has an insurance department. Idaho has one. Idaho's insurance department takes care of Idaho residents, residents primarily, um, people who buy a, a product from a company domiciled in Idaho. And there's, I think there's maybe just one in Idaho that's domiciled here, or at least there was, I'm not sure if there's any more right now. Um, but they protect Idaho citizens as that's, that's their primary thing. So if you, um, if you live in another state and you buy one, then you go to their state to, to get some help. Um, so that's, yeah, so that's all that. Does that kind of answer your, your question there, Marie? Okay, you're on mute. So, um, so anyways, that's the Idaho uh, Guarantee Association. Um, so the next thing now, and B, so the next slide, it's uh, what are the different types of annuities? So there's, and I, I always like to early on get this out because when people hear someone talks about an annuity, if they don't say fixed annuity, variable annuity, uh, indexed annuity, it's a whole, they're whole, they're just completely different. It's like having a car versus a pickup versus a dump truck. They're just completely different. Um, what they have in common is they grow tax deferred. That's what they have in common. They grow tax deferred. You're not taxed till you put the money out. Here's the, here's kind of a one line um, definition of the others. A variable annuity does not typically have guarantees. It's more like having a mutual fund wrapped in the tax deferral of annuity. So a variable annuity does not have the basic guarantees that a fixed annuity has. It's like a mutual fund wrapped in the tax deferral part. So there no, the investment is really no better, no worse than a mutual fund. It's, that's what it is and nothing wrong with it. You know, when the stock market does good, they're fabulous. If the stock market doesn't do so good, you're not gonna be so happy. That's what it is. And, and uh, but they're fine products. Um, and, you know, most people's retirement is in is typically is in the stock market in some fashion and mutual funds, that type of thing. And some variable news have some little special attachments you can put on the attachments they call riders that can give some little guarantees or some little payout guarantees, and those are good too. So there's all kinds of, but we're not focusing on that today. We're talking about the fixed, which are guaranteed. The third kind of an annuity is called an indexed annuity, and that's kind of a hybrid between a variable and a fixed annuity. So an indexed annuity has some basic guarantees. Generally, what you put in is guaranteed. 
uh, some of them might guarantee like a 1% a year or half a percent or just guarantee your principal and maybe nothing else. But if the stock market has a good growth, you get you shared part of the growth. If the, just for the, if the stock market grew 20%, you might get 8% of the 20, just giving a number. With a variable annuity, you'd get the whole 20% growth. So an index, you get some growth in, in the market, but they cap it. Um, it, it. Again, it's a fine product. You just have to know how it works. And, 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 and the products have been some internal fees, usually you know, one or 2% could be some internal fees um, you have to look at. So, but I just wanted to just establish that the, those are the three kinds of annuities. So when someone says annuity, you need to know, is it a fixed? Is it a variable? Is it indexed to know what they're talking about? So back to, uh, so back to, to the fixed annuities. So there's, there's two sides to an annuity. Number one, there's the, uh, an accumulation side, the buildup side. Think of just building up a savings account and then later you spend on the savings account. So some people know annuities from their building on the building up the accumulation side. Um, and then the, then the second part is the payout side. You can say, okay, now I want to start collecting. You can take your money out in one lump sum. You can take it out over a lifetime. You can take it out over 10 years. You can do a, a lifetime payout with a 10 year guarantee. There's all kinds of options you have with the insurance companies and they give you the, the different choices. On the accumulation side, you can, put a, you can put a lump sum into an annuity. You can, some you can put in a lump sum and then you can put in monthly or yearly. Some you only can put in once and that's it. Um, some you can just do monthly only. So there's all kinds of ways to accumulate. And again, you have to talk with the, the company and so forth to see which it is that they have, but there's different ways to accumulate. On the flexibility of, of an annuity, so here's, you know, it's interesting. I have to really chuckle. So I get these things in the mail and you see these things on TV and, and some of these advertise, you know, one set of companies say, oh, and annuities are the worst thing in the world. And, and they're like building retirement on quicksand. Another company goes in there and says, you know, you want guarantees, you'll never lose money and you'll always make money. So you've got both sides. And, you know, it's, it's, um, the, 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 there's two parts to the story. And, and so I just share that you have to kind of be careful what you, what you believe when you see things on TV. And, um, so the, you can get your money out of an annuity, you put it in, say you put in for a, a seven, eight year commitment time. Most company, most all companies give you a, you can pull out 10% every year without any, any early surrender charge. So they call that a free withdrawal. And typically it's 10%. Some companies say you can pull out whatever the earnings are that year without uh, a um, early withdrawal charge. Again, whenever you pull out earnings, you pay tax on them. You leave the earnings in, you don't pay tax until you pull them out. So people can do some, some income tax planning and strategies by having that flexibility of waiting to pull it out until you're ready to pay tax or, or you wanna pay tax. Um, so that's, yeah, and on, and on that too, I should mention, tying into the early surrender charges. So typically when an annuity commit, typically three years is about the minimum, five is common, seven, eight is very common, 10 is like the maximum. So anytime you pull money out before your commitment time, there'll be some early surrender charge, which typically if it's an eight year surrender charge, typically the, the early charges, if you pull it out the first year is an 8% penalty, that's not good. It, usually it drops the 1% a year. So if you pull it out the second year, there's a 7% uh, charge. The third year is 6% charge. This is if you pull out the whole amount. Remember, you can get that 10% typically no early surrender charge. So the surrender charge usually drops 1% a year is, is how most of them do. Um, but you have to look at, look at the details. Um, then after the commitment time, after three years, five years, seven years, then you can pull it out and there's no surrender charge at all. And, and then you just pay income taxes when you, when you pull the money out. Um, way back in the old days, long time ago, um, with annuities, you could put money in, it would grow tax deferred, and you could pull out your principal and not pay tax. But this is back 
literally 40 years ago, they changed, changed the laws on that. And back then it was a very, very sweet deal. And if you bought one back then, it, it still works that way. But now you pay tax as you pull it out. Um, any, any questions there on that section? If not, we'll go to the next section. I, I, Okay, I don't, I don't see anything. Okay, so the next, so the next slide is C. Um, so C is the positive and negative aspects of fixed annuities. When do they make sense? When do they not make sense? Why would I would not want to buy one? And it just gets back to, you know, how are annuities similar, different from other investments? Again, you, you know, everyone knows Everybody knows how a, a savings account works. Everyone knows how a CD or a certificate of deposit works. Um, so just think of a fixed annuity is, is like that, except it gets tax deferral. So savings account, you pay tax every year. The fixed annuity, you don't pay tax until you pull the money out. Same with the CD, you pay tax on those earnings every year. With a fixed annuity, you don't pay tax until you, you pull the money out. So um, that's, that's just a big part of what the benefit of an annuity is. Um, another question, how do annuities perform in a recession or inflationary time? Well, in a recession where things are going backwards and, and rates return drop, if you bought an annuity, if people who bought them five, six years ago that were paying 5% or 6% or whatever, they, you get that for whatever the commitment time is again, depending on the annuity. So you could get five or 6% back then for seven or eight years, even though new products in the market maybe are paying just a couple percent, you'd still be getting five or six or 7%. So, so when you go into an inflationary time, it's nice you keep that higher rate of return. Buying one today, they're paying the lower rates like everything else is. So that's why today it's kind of a, like in the one to 3% range, depending on what kind you get. Um, but when a recession hits, you keep, you're guaranteed that rate of return that you were receiving. And inflation. For, Larry, I have a question for you. Sure, sure. So the question is, can you clarify tax treatment for after tax contributions? Only the gains would be taxed? Great question. Great question. Yes. So when you buy an annuity, not, not looking at an IRA, you're just buying a personally owned annuity, the money that goes in there is after tax money. So um, it's, you pay taxes, you put money in there. It, it's not tax deductible when you put into annuity, except if it's an IRA. So it's after tax money. When you go to cash out, and I think this is your question, you go to cash it out, you get all the money you put in back income tax free, the gain is taxed, just the gain is taxed. And again, it's taxed at ordinary rates, not a capital gains rate, which is lower. So um, even though it, it could be in there for years and years, it's, it's always taxed at ordinary rates. And there's often and always, it seems like there's a fight between the insurance industry and the legislator, because they, they think they want to tax the, uh, they don't like tax deferral because they like tax money today, but that's another subject. But so there's always a little conflict going. And I used to be in that years and years ago, but uh, not anymore. So does that kind of answer that question, Marie? Thumbs up. Okay, good, good, good enough. Um, so back to, um, yeah, and, and sometimes when you start an annuity, again, they'll give you a bonus up front. So you might see an annuity where it says, where it says uh, for annuity paying 5%. Well, they might give you a 5% bonus up front, but it's, you're committed for 10 years and you get 1% for the rest of the 10 years. So you have to look beyond the advertising to get to what your real rate of return is. And those aren't necessarily bad, but you just need to know, you know, you're getting 5% the first year and 1% the rest of the years and maybe it averages out to 2%, which is fine. You just need to know that. So, um, and back to, we talked earlier about, you know, how safe are they in the guarantees? Again, they're backed by the general portfolio of the company. 
you know, there's, in, there's insurance companies that are worth several hundred billion dollars. Um, there's insurance companies worth a billion or less than a billion. Um, so you have to use it. it's good to look at the size and, and the smaller ones can be perfectly fine. They, you know, if, if they're profitable and, and they're run right, there's nothing wrong with them at all. Sometimes the smaller companies will give a little better rate of return some often the smaller sometimes the smaller companies don't have quite a high of a financial rating just because they're small and part of the financial rating is is has size has part of it something to do with that so when the companies have higher ratings part of that is they put more into reserves so a little more security when they put more into reserves you're going to get a little lower return because they're putting more there's more security so it's just good you know, to look at the financials of the company, uh, look at the ratings, very important. Again, look at this, it's called AM Best is, is kind of the main um, rating agency. And, and again, there's AAA, there's AA, A, A minus. If you're in the A range, you're, you're great, you're, uh, you're generally. Now, it, a company, you can also look and see if three years ago it was, it was AA, a couple of years ago it dropped to A and now it's A minus, then I'd be a little nervous. So you wanna look, it's good to look at how it's been going over the past few years, past 10 years, five years. Um, but if it's been steady at A, A minus, you know, I mean, generally you should be fine. And, and uh, you can look into the financials of the insurance company, it's public information. So, and again, on the, the guarantees, besides the assets, you've got the Idaho Life and Health Guarantee Association as a backup um, for, a quarter million dollars on on one annuity, a 300 maximum per, per person on that guarantee. And again, agents can't talk about it. So if you talk to an agent, he should not be telling you about that, which is interesting. But again, they don't want people to buy annuities based on the guarantee association because um, the companies that were not healthy were doing that and the guarantee association was paying out a whole bunch of money, they'd go broke. And they've been around for 30 some years, I believe. I don't remember, yeah, yeah 30, 30, 40 years that they, they've been around in Idaho. So anyhow, well, that's, you know, that's, um, do we have any, any more questions? That's kind of the basic, you know, I could keep talking, we can talk about stuff, but that's kind of the basics of annuities. Um, so does anyone at this point have any questions? And at this, uh, from what Larry has already discussed, or do you have any questions that you're not um, familiar? I see something that says, could you cover, is it M-Y-G-A? My... M-Y-G-A? Bas uh, basically one type of deferred annuities. M Y G A. Hey Roger, you can go ahead and go off mute and ask your question. I was going to have Roger go ahead and ask the question himself. That way, uh, maybe he can say it correctly. Okay, that'd be great. Yeah, because I I'm not. I think I he's not. asking about multiple year guaranteed annually. That's okay. what the that's what the MYGA is. Multiple, multiple year, year guaranteed annuity. Okay, you know, um, we'll have to just so multiple year. So it's you know probably a five or seven eight year annuity, multiple year guaranteed annually. Um, well, annuity. no, an, not annually, guaranteed annuity. Oh, guaranteed annuity. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Multiple year guaranteed annuity. Okay. Um, you know, I think that's, I think that's really, I think that's kind of a definition of what we're talking. It's a great question because you, you get all these different names of annuities and, and most people just from the name, you, you can't figure out what it is. I think right now that he's saying that they be, they're being advertised and promoted. That type of annuity is being advertised right. and promoted. Right, right. Yeah, so I think, let's look at the name multiple year guaranteed annuity. Well, if it says guarantee, it's, it's, not, a, it's not a variable annuity, which is mutual fund type. It's not that. Um, 
so it'd be a, a fixed annuity. It could be an indexed annuity because index have guarantees as well. Um, and again, a index is kind of a hybrid between a fixed and a variable. Multiple year would just, I mean, to me, it's a marketing, it's, it's a, nothing wrong with it. It's just a marketing thing saying it's not just a one year guarantee, it's a multiple year. So all fixed annuities we could say are multiple year guarantees because they go for three years, five years, seven or 10 years. So I think that's just a kind of a marketing, not in a bad way, but it's a marketing description of, to help people understand it's not just a one year guarantee, it's a multiple year. Um, and, and, and again, a lot, of, a lot of annuities pay a different amount the first year as the later years. So they're guaranteed, but the rate of return can change. But I think it's just, they're just, it's just a deeper description of what an annuity does is that it guarantees the rates multiple years, not just one year. So Rogers, is that kind of? Yeah, they've just been kind of a buzzword I've heard lately. And um, they typically are, like you said, three, five, seven, ten year periods. And sometimes they'll reset the rates, you know, after the guaranteed period of three years. Versus right. Yeah, ap yeah, exactly. Right. Yep. After after the guarantee period, there's there's literally always a reset. It's And so often then people will either re-up on that annuity, renew it or re-up or buy a new annuity because generally the guarantees, not always, again, there's, every company is different, but generally the guarantees are over or they might pay a higher rate. They might pay, say they're paying 3% for, for seven years and after seven years, maybe it drops to 1%. So um, yeah, that they, they do all those different things, exactly. Great question, great question. I think it was mostly a lot of it just seems to be sort of a marketing thing that they're, they're doing. As, and, and your answer kind of showed me that. So as, a, as an insurance professional, you're, you're maybe not in tune with those currently as yeah. other people are marketing them. Yeah. No, you're exactly right. It, it's, it's, again, not in a bad way, but it's a marketing because when you just say, so you get a 6% annuity, people are like, well, is that 6% for one year or 3% or for one year or 3% for two years or whatever? So multiple year just gives some, some a little more explanation that it's more than one year. Um, but again, you need to look at how long is it guaranteed and when does it drop down and, you know, what are the, what are the early surrender charges if I want to take it out? How much free withdrawal can I get per year? Um, annuities are really good. They're they're great. There's nothing wrong with them at all. It's just like, and I have to just chuckle when I see some of these ads on TV that, you know, just don't, don't tell the right, don't tell the, they, they leave out some information, we'll just say. So Larry, are yeah. annuities being sold more now than they were 10 years ago or not? You know, I would say, I, I, I mean, I, I can't tell you statistically from companies what, what it is but they're safe and they're guaranteed. And I think now people like safe and guarantees. Um, I would say they're being sold as much or more now than ever because probably even more, well, you know, when the stock market is zooming, people want to get in into the zooming of the stock market. And unfortunately, if you get in when it's already really high, then it goes backwards and then people get out and then they've lost money. And, um, so, but when things are, are not doing so well, annuities are attractive because it, it's paying a similar rate as, a, as like a savings or a CD or maybe a little bit more, but it gets tax deferral. So um, when the stock market is doing 20%, you know, and, a, and a, an annuity is doing four or 5%, you know, then it's, you know, people might go for the stock market, you know, in mutual funds or something, which again, that's not bad. That's not bad either, but. Uh, you know, diversified, I mean, as everyone says, a diversified program is really the best way to go because having some and having your pie split up a little bit. Do you have to have a certain amount to, to buy an annuity? I mean, great a dollar yeah. amount? Great question. Great question. Yeah, most of them, I'm kind of looking at, I just got some, you know, current printouts and which nothing has really changed too much. But, you know, usually a few thousand, three to five thousand is typically the minimum. Um, yeah, you, you can get into annuity for three to five. 
Uh, the list I'm looking at here is uh, five or 10,000 for these, for these, uh, some have 25,000 limits. Um, yeah, so pretty much 5,000 is, is kind of the minimum for, um, and let's see, some of these others, um, the minimum 8,000, 5,000, 7,000. So, and some you can put in just monthly, so there's really no minimum there. But, so I'd say 5,000 is kind of the general minimum to get an, an annuity. And then for the larger returns you put in, again, you, you put in a, a larger quantity and you get generally a little higher rate of return. Okay, anybody have any questions for Larry right now? Either out loud or in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, really it's, you know, it's, it, it's a, it's a really a simple product. It's actually a very, very simple product, but it's complicated if you don't know. I have another question thing. for you. Sure. What are the typical sales commissions for the different types of annuities? Okay, great question. Question great, mark. <laughs> yeah, great, great question. So how that works is, Usually, the longer that you're committed on an annuity, the higher the commission. If it's a short term, like a three year annuity, it's a, generally a lower commission. And then the higher the early surrender charge, generally, the higher the commission. And I'll give you some of those numbers in a second. So, the general the knowledge in the insurance industry is if you're selling an annuity that has a, a long commitment period and a high surrender charge, the agent is going to get a higher commission. And, you know, most, I mean, that's, most agents don't really, well, I won't get into that, but that's, um, there's, I guess, a moral aspect of, um, but that's generally how it is. Generally, the longer the term um, and the higher the surrender charge, the higher the commission. And the commissions are, you know, generally, I'm going to say one to 5% in that general range. Yeah, one, I'd say one to, one to five percent is kind of the, it can be a little more, a little less, uh, depending on, and, and sometimes the money has to stay in for at least a year before the agent gets a commission. Um, so it's, you know, it, it's comparable to what an agent can make on, you know, and if they sell mutual funds or stocks, I mean, in the end, over time, it's, it kind of comes out pretty similar. Some products pay a little more upfront and less per year. Some pay less upfront and more per year. Um, but but that's that's the range. So I'd say kind of one to five percent is. But it it doesn't. The consumer generally does not see that because if you put in like you know, ten thousand into an annuity, the whole ten thousand is there. The company recoups its money because if it pays you say two percent, it needs to make say three percent just to pick a number. So it's making it's making its money on on the difference of its earning say it's earning three or four percent and it's paying you two percent that's how it gets that's how it pays the commissions so so generally you put in your ten thousand you get the whole ten thousand back plus you know a couple percent per year in, in that rough range. Does that kind of you answered that. this, but I'm going to ask you again. Oh, yeah, so yeah. You, sure. would call, you would call these a safe investment? Yes. I mean, yeah, fixed, fixed annuities are a very, very safe. I mean, they're just, they're very safe. It's, you know, um, you know, a, a, like a bank, uh, their CDs are backed up by the FDIC to, I think it's well, still a quarter million, I think, per account, something like that. Um, FDIC is pretty big, backed by the government. I don't know all the details of that, but it's you know it's pretty big and pretty safe. The CD, the, the annuities are backed by the insurance company and by the state association. And again, you want to look at you know a lot of insurance companies have been around 100, 150 years. Um, there's there's some security in the just the financials of the because the insurance companies they're invested in in the bond in the bonds of the whole country. If, if, um, and if the whole comp 
country, I mean, this, you know, the whole country sank financially. I mean, it's everything sinks and it, you know, then you want to just get your backpack and some food and get into a safe place, I guess. But um, it, it's, you know, it, historically it's been, they've been very, very safe. And, and um, uh, as I said, it's, so it, you can feel good with a fixed annuity. Variable, there's generally no guarantees unless you buy a little special rider that has some, some guarantees which you pay more for. And an indexed annuity has guarantees as well. So, um, yeah, so it's definitely a, a safe, safe investment. Okay, well, I was going to tell everyone if you had um, any questions for Larry that you think about after, um, he has told me I can give you his email address. You could email him the questions if you'd like to talk live with them. I'm sure you, got, you could exchange phone numbers, but in the chat, I will put his email address and you are more than welcome to um, email him at another time. I also was going to tell you that there is a um, evaluation form that we're going to send to you just in regards to NKA and the classes and the presentations. So if you would help us by filling that out. So Steve, I don't know if you were going to um, attach that link. Bring it now. Okay. Then you can um, fill that out please for us. Uh, go to that link and give us the feedback. That would be great. Okay, well, I guess I'm about done then. So I'd like to just thank, thank all of you for being here and for your questions and I'm very happy if anyone has any follow-up questions or down the road or you know someone who has a question, shoot me an email. I'm happy. I'm an open book, happy to share and, and uh, uh, help you navigate whatever questions or issues you might have. So thank so you for your time. Get, let me uh, go ahead and put your email here and then they'll have it. All right. Larry at nexuswm.com. Yep, WM like William Mary, or like wealth management. Yes. <laughs> okay, so there's Larry's email if you'd like to get a hold of him at a later date. And we appreciate all of you for participating, and this has been recorded. So once we uh, make a decision on where we're going to put all these recordings, you can always come back and revisit this, or you can pass it on to someone else who possibly wasn't able to make it today or that you know might have an interest in the talk itself. And so we just want to thank right. you, Larry. You bet. Well, thank you. It's us today. Happy to do it. Nice to be a part of it. I think it's a great organization to be doing this. And uh, I'm happy that I'm a AARP member and enjoy all, the, enjoy all their materials and benefits. It's great. Exactly. Thank you very much. Thank if we you. can help each other get through the pandemic by uh, giving a little bit of entertainment, we're happy about that. Perfect. Perfect. Sounds really good. Okay. Well, so uh, everyone have a great day. Thanks again for tuning in. Appreciate it. Okay, so long. All right. Bye-bye.